Okay, so yesterday at the end of scene two um, in our play, the golden egg had just been found. And remember this family in this <clears throat> neighborhood that this family lives in, they don't have a lot of money. And now they have found something very rare and something very special. And we're gonna see if that changes them. Um, so let's look at scene three. It says that afternoon. So we're no longer um, in the morning time, we're in the afternoon and they're probably trying to figure some things out. The boys sit at their tiny wooden table staring at the golden egg. I've never seen real gold before. Neither have I. What should we do with it? What is it worth? Settle down, everybody. This is a lucky day. We'll tuck this egg away and save it until we need it. But Granny, imagine what we could do. What? Imagine what we could buy with it. I need new shoes. I want a new dress. I'd love new cooking pots. Granny looks at Paul. Well, that's sense in saving that... No there's sense in saving the egg for a rainy day. So let's talk about what Paul means when he said saving for a rainy day. It says saving for a time of need, even if it's not raining. So that's some figurative language. That's an idiom. Like it doesn't literally mean that you're saving it for a rainy day, but you're saving it for a day when you really, really need it. Granny smiles. But I sure would like a better horse and cart to take to market. Be sensible. We should only spend it if it's absolutely necessary. I can't believe our goose laid a golden egg. I'm going to check on Gloria. Betty goes to the barn, then comes running back in, holding something. Another golden egg. Ma, Pa, and Freddie gasp with delight. So Granny is like trying to say like, we really don't need to spend this, let's save it. And everyone else is like, whoa, and I need this and I need that. So let's see how that affects them. Scene four, a few weeks later, the sun comes up, the rooster crows, cock a doo doo doo. Nobody moves. The boys are sound asleep. The rooster crows again. I said, cock a doo doo doo. Hey, rooster, be quiet. We're sleeping in here. Eventually, Ma gets up and lights a candle. The builder will be here soon. Is our new house going to be big? Yes. With our own rooms and real beds? Yes. I don't see why we need a new house. This one is just fine. Paul admires the pile of golden eggs on the table. We can afford it, so why not? It's best not to be greedy. We don't know how long this good fortune will last. Don't worry, Granny. Gloria has been laying golden eggs every day. We will always have plenty of gold. How can you be so sure? So still, <clears throat> the family is doing all kinds of crazy things and building a new home, and they're not worrying at all. But Granny, she's starting to get a little concerned that they're not going to be very grateful for what they have. <clears throat> the next week, the boy's house is being torn down. Paul hands a golden egg to the builder. Next week, I will need more gold to buy materials for your new house. Of course! The tailor arrives with his finest skills. So a tailor is someone who makes clothes. So Paul's getting his own clothes, it sounds like. I've come to measure you for your wardrobe. How grand! Come! We are staying in the barn while our new house is being built. Outside the barn, Betty and Freddie are brushing the new horse. Inside, Granny is sewing up a hole in an old sweater. The tailor approaches Granny. I don't need any new clothes. I'm happy with what I have. The tailor measures everyone else, and Maul gives him an egg. Thank you, madam. You may pay me more gold when the clothes are finished. A gardener arrives. We have ripped out that ugly cornfield and will start your new garden. Exquisite roses will circle a beautiful fountain. It will be a garden fit for a queen. So exquisite means like beautiful, amazing. Thank, oh, how wonderful. Here's a golden egg. Thank you. I will collect more golden next week. Maul takes out a piece of paper. That's three eggs now and seven eggs later. Don't forget, we need to pay the carpenter for the new furniture and the blacksmith for the new horseshoes and the shoemaker for the new boots. The neighbor Joe approaches, he looks pale. Hello, Joe, everything all right? I've been sick for a few weeks and unable to work. 
I was. Joe looked down at his feet. Wondering if you could help me out so I could feed my family. The boys look at each other. Sorry, Joe. We've got nothing to spare. Uh, oh, I don't think that's going to go well. One week later, the sun rises, the rooster crows. Cock-a-doodle! Shh, rooster, we're already up. The boys are gathered near Gloria's nook. We need ten golden eggs today. Hey, Gloria, hurry up! Honk! You've just given me an idea. They take Gloria to the village doctor. So this is the famous goose that lays the golden eggs. Is she ill? No, we're just hoping she could lay her eggs faster. We have so many people to pay. New house, new horse, new clothes. And you need more gold to pay for it. That's right. Well, a goose lays eggs when she's ready. That's it? That's your advice? They bring Gloria back home. The doctor was useless. There must be a way to get more gold out of Gloria. Remember how happy were, we were before the golden eggs? And they all stare at Granny. Later that same day, the boys gather around Gloria who honks nervously. Honk, honk. Are we all agreed? Yes, Pa. Count me in. It's the only way. No, this is madness. Honk, 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 honk. Paul grabs an axe and takes Gloria behind the barn. The others listen eagerly. Honk, honk. Everything goes silent. Well, Paul, what's inside? Is it a gold mine? Paul brings back poor Gloria's body. They look inside her and gasp. There's, there's nothing. Nothing at all. And now there's no more goose. And no way to get more gold. They look at their demolished house and ripped up cornfield. I tried to warn you. You wanted too much and ended up with nothing. Yes, how foolish we were to kill the goose that laid the golden eggs. It says, don't kill the goose that lays the golden eggs is an idiom. What do you think that means? Do you think it like they're literally saying, don't kill the goose that lays the golden eggs? Or are they trying to say like, don't kill things that provide for you um and little not necessarily literally mean killing but like don't don't take away or don't hurt all right so let's talk about this story for a minute like what do you think the moral of this story was like what was the lesson that we could learn from this family um yeah that don't be greedy um, or take care of things that take care of you. Um, I think that's a good one is you don't want to hurt somebody or something that is helping you live and take care of you. And I think that greed can overcome us. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, the family overcame with greed and it took over their life.